getting to know MHS's Connors Adult ADHD Rating Scale 2nd Edition, The Cars 2. My name is Matangi Salvamanen. I am the manager of our research and development team at MHS. My name is Diane Mangalinden. I'm a research scientist at MHS Clinical and Education Division. I'm also the team lead for the data collection team. Tell us about the development of the CARS-2. The CARS was published in 1999, and since its publication, there has been considerable growth in both our scientific understanding of ADHD in adults, as well as of rating scales for assessing mental health disorders, including ADHD. So the CARS-2 was developed really to reflect the updates on both fields. Tell us about some of the new features included in the CARS-2. We know that for clinicians, it's very important to be able to assess how a rater approached completing the rating scale. And so we included several ways of evaluating a rater's response style, including uh, expanding and updating the validity scales. The negative impression index is one of them. It identifies ratings that may be unrealistically negative or problem descriptions that are exaggerated. And then we have an improved inconsistency index, which indicates inconsistent responding. We also have other metrics like omitted items and pace, which essentially flags unusual response times. We also added an ADHD reference sample, and this allows clinicians to be able to compare their client's scores to those produced by others who are already diagnosed with ADHD. This really enables that clinician to be able to evaluate the severity of the reported problems, especially in cases where the client's scores may be extreme in comparison to the normative sample. Another key feature is the expanded upper age range for the normative sample. So the original CARS, the oldest age group was 50 years and older. With the CARS 2, we had stratified samples for 50 to 59, 60 to 69, and 70 plus years. This stratification allows for a more precise assessment of older adults. And we know that impairments related to ADHD can manifest in a number of different ways, making it really important to look at both symptoms as well as impairment. So with the CARS-2, we included items that assess functioning or difficulties in functioning and adverse outcomes in specific tasks like, let's say, money management, as well as broad domains such as work, school, and relationships. How will these new features help clinicians accurately diagnose ADHD and inform intervention planning? Measuring behavior, especially when concerning something as complex as ADHD, can be hard. But with the CARS-2, it's meant to provide a standardized and comprehensive assessment of ADHD. It really allows clinicians to gain a multi-informant perspective of their client's behavior that can be compared across different points in time, across different situations such as treatment interventions, and in relation to the general population. It can also inform clinical diagnosis and intervention planning by providing information on the nature, uh, frequency, and or severity of the reported symptoms, the degree to which those symptoms deviate from the general population, as well as the functional impairments related to those symptoms. What excites you the most about the release of the CARS-2? the measure itself, and I'm not just saying this because I'm on the team, but it is one of the most psychometrically sound measures we have ever developed at MHS. And I'm, I'm excited to see how that data really impacts informed data-based decision-making when it comes to bettering the lives of clients for clinicians. Learn more about the CARS-2. Visit storefront.mhs.com collections cars 2.